Hey everybody, what's going on? We are back talking about a camera a lot of you have been messaging me to talk about and review. So here we are with our Canon 1DX Mark III review in terms of photography. We'll be doing two videos, photography and videography. Because I've been looking at YouTube and I noticed that 90% of the videos out there are about the video capabilities of this camera. They're fantastic, they're great. But what about the photographers out there like you and myself who want to know if the image quality is improved, if the autofocus is improved, how much better is it? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, I do want to put a little bit of a disclaimer out there. We wanted to do something really special for you guys for this review. We wanted to go out and shoot events and go out to great locations, but unfortunately, there are a lot of things happening uh, in the world right now currently that are holding us back from doing so. So this will be a more toned down review in terms of our locations, but hopefully the information will be just as good and it will help you make that decision when you're willing and able to get the 1DX Mark III. All right, guys, let's get down to it. So like always, we are not paid or sponsored by anyone for this review. Canon has been very kind to loan me the camera, plus three lenses of the 70 to 200 f2.8 Mark III, the 51.2, and the 24-70 f4. Now, most of my photos have been done with the 70 to 200 and the 51.2. These are my two favorite lenses in the EF lineup. I haven't tried the 35 1.4, which a lot of you have told me is a phenomenal lens. Canon didn't have that available for this review, but I might rent it in the future if I ever get the 1DX back to see how it performs. But nonetheless, that is what I use for this uh, review thus far. Now, in terms of specs, we're not gonna talk about all the specs in this camera. If you wanna see all those, Canon.com or Canon Singapore or whatever Canon website you wanna go to, they have it all there. I'll go through some of the ones that will be important to you in terms of photography. Sensor. On paper, it's the same sensor as the Mark II, but there have been a lot of changes. Canon said they redesigned the sensor. You got 14-bit in terms of color depth. You've got uh, better detail, better dynamic range, better ISO performance. You've got the Digic X processor that's helping with the imaging. You will see a definitive difference in the images. I will show you this in Lightroom in just a bit. ISO performance is 100 to 102,400, or if you want to expand it, 50 to 819,200. Like always, we're never gonna shoot at that kind of range. But low light performance has been improved. This is a low light beast of a camera. It is phenomenal in low light. You're gonna get great detail. Is it gonna be just like shooting in daylight? No, let's be realistic. Marketing is marketing, but it is an improvement over the Mark II. In terms of autofocus points, you have 191 autofocus points on this. So you have a new autofocusing system in it. Also, you have 155 cross point autofocusing system in it. Guys, let's cut through the chase. Layman's terms, autofocusing is really, really good on this. It is better than the 1DX Mark II. This thing locks on like a sniper and it doesn't let go if you want to track. It's phenomenal. There, I'll just simplify it for you guys. In terms of body design, if you put a Mark II against this, you wouldn't know the difference unless you look at the left side where you have the ports. Now they have these covers here, make it a little bit more weather resistant, a little bit easier to get, uh, get to. Um, they're all detailed there, everything is great. Now besides the port coverings on the left-hand side, the only discernible difference you're gonna notice is when you open up the, uh, the card slot door. Now you have two CF Express card slots in this. We were very fortunate by Canon to get a 512 gigabyte card in this camera for review. That's a phenomenal card. That's an expensive card. That adds a lot of, uh, you know, I think it's about almost a thousand Singapore dollars for currently right now, give or take, depending on where you buy it. But the capacity, I mean, guys, you can shoot a sporting event with this and you're not gonna run out of space. And that's shooting raw and JPEG or raw and HIF files. I mean, this is a phenomenal card. And the right speeds, Wow. Why aren't more camera companies putting CF Express card slots in their ca uh, cameras? Why? Especially at the higher megapixel when you want to sh shoot faster uh, or, you know, frame rates. I mean, this is phenomenal. There is no buffering issue. I mean, people talk about it like, yeah, you just hold it down for like an hour. Yes. And the cards, I mean, in terms of data transfer, it's great. When you're transferring from my camera to my laptop, because I didn't have a card reader for this review, speeds were pretty decent. 
Um, riding, I just, I can't say enough about these cards. This is the future, guys. More camera companies should be doing this, and if they're not, shame on them, because this is where it is at. But the cards are not cheap. I do want to forewarn you on that, so buy within your means. Um, besides that, the display in the back of it now is full touchscreen which I applaud Canon for. 2.1 million dots. It's very clear, very vibrant, great colors, but a full touch interface from touching the menu to auto-focusing to tracking. It is fantastic, which leads me to the performance of this camera. Now, in terms of performance, one of the reasons why you get a 1DX camera is for that insane high speed frame rate burst modes, right? The 1DX Mark II was no slouch by any stretch of the imagination. The 1DX Mark III has taken it up a few notches. You do get an increase when you're in, uh, you know, mirrored mode or DSLR mode to 15 frames per second. But when you go into live view mode or mirrorless mode, you can go up to 20 frames per second with mechanical shutter and complete silent shooting with the electronic shutter as well. So you have three shutters in this. You have the mechanical shutter, electronic burst curtain shutter, and then the full electronic uh, shutter into this. And it is crazy, crazy, crazy fast. For you wedding photographers out there, for those of you who need to shoot in, let's say, a courtroom or somewhere that you need silence, you now have that ability with the 1DX Mark III, which is a big reason for a lot of you that will upgrade for that reason alone silent shooting, high frame rate, phenomenal autofocusing, even at those speeds. It's, I would say, class leading in a lot of ways. And wow, the performance is there. Another feature that Canon has added to this camera is a new AF on button. Now, with the EOS R, they had the touch bar. Remember the touch bar? Pretty much everybody hated it. I didn't, I just turned mine off, but some people really had this passionate disapproval of it. Canon listened to you, they tried something new on this. This AF on button also has a touch sensitive uh, area on it. It allows you to move the focus point around. Now, it's not always on. You actually have to activate it to turn it on. So it's a two-step process. And you can set the speed of how fast it will adjust the focus point throughout, but it does work really well. And I have used it, especially in photo shoots, and it has helped me quite a bit, especially when I wanna, let's say, focus on someone's eye or maybe on, let's say, an earring or a piece of a, uh, like a jacket or a plant and the autofocusing system isn't recognizing it, I can just move that point right away, very easy without taking my eye off the OVF. So, Canon. Put this in more of your cameras, this is really cool. It does take some adjusting to use, but like anything, you gotta work with a camera for a couple weeks. Once you get it down, it's second nature, and it works like a charm. The Canon 1DX Mark III is essentially two cameras in one body. You have pretty much the best sports DSLR on the market, and I haven't tried the Nikon D6, so I, but just in terms of specs, in terms of performance, there's really not much out there better that I've tried thus far. But when you flip the mirror up and you go into live view mode or mirrorless mode, you now have a camera that performs better than the EOS R with the latest updates. There is one caveat to all this, which I'll talk about at the final, at my final points of this review, but you literally have two phenomenal cameras in one with no compromises. This camera is going to last you for a good number of years. If you are like, well, do I, I have an older 1DX? Do I go up to the Mark III? If you are going to be in the type of photography that, that needs this type of camera, it doesn't have to be sports photography. I shot a lot of images, which I'll show you in just a bit, for fashion, for campaigns, for things like that, and it performed admirably. But if you have the means and you're willing to invest in this camera, this will not be obsolete in one or two years. You've got a good three, four years with this camera and get phenomenal images out of it. The software updates, the firmware updates from Canon will make it even better. And you literally have two cameras in one with the best processors that Canon makes on the market to date. Anyway, enough about that. Let's go into Lightroom. I'm gonna show you the images compared to what it was like with the 1DX Mark II in terms of tracking, in terms of detail, sharpness. 
and let you decide if the Windy X Mark III is the camera for you. All right, guys, we're now in Lightroom taking a look at images I shot with the One DX Mark III. Now, as I mentioned previously in this review, I feel that the image quality has improved over the One DX Mark II. ISO performance, colors, tonality, just the overall image dynamic range, all that stuff, right? So I'm gonna show you an image that I took with the One DX Mark II a number of months back. Now, this is not a scientific comparison. Now, from my previous reviews, I know some of you have said, why don't you shoot the same exact subject with the two different cameras, the same focal length, so then we can properly see it. Look, sometimes we don't have the luxury of having both cameras with us at the same time, especially in this case. The 1DX Mark II I had for my previous review, we'll put a link in the description below, but I'll show you compared to the 1DX Mark III, and they're both Rottweiler puppies, okay? Just different ages. So here is a puppy, three months old, shot at ISO 5000. Looks good. If I wanna zoom in a lot, obviously you're gonna see some grain there, retains a pretty good detail, Color in the room, a little bit off. That can be corrected in Lightroom, Not is no issues at all. This is just the raw image. Now let me show you this image, shot at ISO 10,000. Same lens though, 51.2 EF 51.2, one of my favorite lenses in the Canon EF lineup. Uh, look at the detail at 10,000 ISO. Now, if I wanna zoom in a little bit more, yeah, you're gonna see some grain, but look at the hairs that it captures here. The little bit of a dandruff, the sharpness in the eye, the tonality, this image looks great at ISO 10,000. Really looks fantastic. And I honestly, when I've showed it to people, I even put it up on our YouTube community page, ask you what your thoughts were. A lot of you chose that this image looked better, and that's because of the new ISO performance, the improvement of the ISO performance in the 1DX Mark III. Let's talk about low light for a second here. I'm gonna show you a couple low light shots. Now, this is from a campaign I shot for Hugo, which is sort of the street youth label for Hugo Boss. And this was shot inside of a hallway, had one light from the ceiling casting down on him. ISO 160, uh, ISO 160 at one over 60. So I really had to make sure that I did not get any camera shake. There's a slight camera shake in there. It's not 100% tack sharp, but it is uh, not bad for what I wanted to capture. And again, the 51.2 is not the sharpest lens out there for the most part, but it does a very good job if you know how to work with it. But look at the dynamic range, the tones, everything like that. It looked really well, no issues at all with low light. Um, let me show you this image here because this is shot at backlight. Now, this was a daylight outside. He was dark. This is an edited image. I was able to pull out details, the shadows and everything else out of the image and still maintain pretty good detail. Because as you know, Canons have not always been the best or best known for dynamic range, but I have seen an improvement in the 1DX Mark III versus the Mark II. And uh, yeah, as you can see right there, it works relatively well. Here's another image from the campaign. Again, great tonality, great uh, dynamic range. The images, I can play with the shadows, the highlights a little bit more than I was able, wasn't able to in the 1DX Mark II and still retain really good detail in the image shot at ISO 100. I try to keep things as low ISO as possible for campaigns, um, unless you're really in a dark room and you have no choice, but try to bring a, an external light source if you can, if all possible. Um, here's another shot I did for him, a Hugo campaign as well. Uh, this was shot at ISO 100, but look at the detail, the colors, um, the detail, this is all with a 51.2, by the way. I wanted to try the 35 1.4, wasn't, didn't have it available uh, from Canon at the time. Hopefully in the future I can try that uh, lens, but nonetheless, really happy with the tonality and the image quality coming out of the 1DX Mark III and with the 51.2. Okay, let's talk about action for a second here because obviously with dynamic tracking, with AI, there's a lot of things that Canon put into the new software and to really beef up the auto focusing. Now, is it 100% accurate all the time? No, no camera is. But the 1DX Mark III is a noticeable improvement. Now, I'm just gonna show you final shots on this to give you an example. This is at my friend's go-kart track called the Karting Arena here in Singapore. If you ever get a chance, do come by, check it out. It's a great little track. The carts go about 50, 60 kilometers per hour. A uh, lot of safety in there, but we have a great time. This is for a boss campaign, part of Hugo Boss's the more formal wear. They're wearing suits as they're driving around in go-karts, pretty cool. But look at this, I had this locked on uh, to the helmet. It just stayed on the helmet the entire time. I was laying on the ground, I was using the OVF, I was not using uh, the live view mode on this, but look how tack sharp this is. I mean, for being ISO 200 and going, you know, relatively fast around the track. I mean, you can see the detail in his hands, everything else, 
no issues at all. This image was fantastic. Look at the detail you can capture within the face here. My friend's driving around here. Again, the expression in the eyes. Again, really a great job done by the 1DX Mark III. This new autofocusing system has really made things a lot better. Look at this shot. Driving by, whizzing by, thumbs up in the air, had him locked on, the camera did not move, had the thumb, had the face in focus. Again, can't say enough about this camera, especially in terms of performance. Now here's a panning shot here. I was focusing on the karting arena because I wanted to get that logo in shot. Um, panning shots are more camera technique than they are auto focusing for the most part, but nonetheless, just want to show you this as an alternative um, from the action out there that I shot that was head on and it does a relatively great job with that. Let's talk about animals for a second here. Now, I didn't have a chance to shoot wildlife um, with this camera at this point in time because I didn't have it for a long period of time. I just had it for a short period of time, but I was doing some street walking with some friends, came across some uh, cats, and I thought, we got to shoot some cats here. And nonetheless, we had a great time. Look at this cat. Look at this. Look at the eyes in this image. Sharp. For a 20 megapixel camera, this is sharp. When you compare it to the 47 and the hundreds, yeah, when you zoom in 400%, it's still relatively sharp. But for the 1DX Mark III, this is really, really good. Again, getting a little blue steel over the shoulder. Looks great. Caught in the action of meowing or not happy with someone. This, this one wasn't happy with me at all. Look at this face. Now, but look at the detail. Now, again, the 51.2 is not the sharpest lens out there, but it has a lot of great character. I really just love this lens. I can't say enough about it. But if you want to compare it to the RF 51.2, there's no comparison. The 51.2 uh, from the RF line is just a beautiful 50, one of the best 50s on the market, if you ask me in terms of uh, autofocus 50s. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, once again, the 1DX Mark III just really has a lot of great tonality, a lot of great colors. The dynamic range has improved. The ISO performance has improved. It's really one of my favorite cameras to shoot with. Now, again, I would prefer a little bit of a higher resolution sensor, but this has a improvement over the 1DX Mark II. It does perform a little more like a 24 megapixel sensor versus the 1DX Mark II, which is was 20 megapixel and it had that kind of 20 megapixel image quality. The 1DX Mark III really does supersede that in a lot of ways. And if you have the funds and the availability to get this camera, I would definitely recommend it if you need a camera that can perform the way the 1DX Mark III can. Overall, my thoughts on the 1DX Mark III is that this is Canon's best. This is their flagship but I like that they future-proofed this camera. They know that someone is going to invest in this camera and it's gonna be for a few years. It's not gonna be a camera that they're gonna sell within a year or two, some might, but for a lot of the working photographers out there and those that need the performance and power of the 1DX Mark III, this is gonna last you for a few years. Canon has thought about that. HEIF files in there, even though it's limited in terms of how you can view them currently, that will be fixed in future software updates from developers but it's there when, you'll need, when you need it. Um, obviously, there'll be performance upgrades and updates to the firmware and software to this camera to give you a lot of the latest things that Canon will be coming out with in the near future. But it's just been a joy to use. It's a camera that I can take out and shoot and I don't worry if the shot is in focus. If I'm in a low light situation, I wish there was IBIS to it, but now I know that could be a, probably a hindrance with having a mirror inside of this, mirror inside of this thing. But I wish there was that because when you do shoot low light performance, even at a 51.2, you will get some camera shake in there sometimes, but it's not a deal breaker. There is one thing though, I wish Canon would have done with this camera. As I mentioned before, this is essentially two cameras in one. But the problem is when you go into live view mode or mirrorless mode, you now have to hold a camera like this. Now with the 51.2, that's not that bad because it's, pretty light. But when I put the 70 to 200 on this, that's a lot of weight to be shooting like this. Now, some of you will be using a monopod or a tripod when you're doing sports or wildlife photography, so you won't notice much, much in terms of that. But if you want to go handheld, if Canon would have put a hybrid viewfinder in this camera, they would have had the best of both worlds. Not like the camera's not big enough to put it in there. It's obviously a big camera. 
But if you could use the OVF for your DSLR and then go to live view mode and have an EVF waiting for you, that would have made this the ultimate complete package. Besides that, guys, if you have the means and if you thinking, is the 1DX Mark III a, a relevant upgrade? Yes, it is. In terms of photography, you will see a difference. This will last you for years. It's robust, it's a beast, it's fast. This is the best of the best from Canon and I'm gonna hate to give it back. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Canon 1DX Mark III. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you have any more questions? Let me know, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Like always, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. Be safe, be healthy out there, and we'll talk to you soon.